Hi everyone, welcome back. We're looking at the core Agile practices from the Agile Practice Guide from Project Management Institute and Agile Alliance. This one in particular is the whole team approach. The whole team approach means involving everyone with the knowledge and the skills necessary to ensure project success. So what that means is, instead of having to gather different people from all around the organization or you know, an area to actually work on your project in little bits and pieces, we're including them all in the whole team so they're 100% dedicated to the project and can really deliver much more quickly. The team should be relatively small. So successful teams have been observed with as few as three people and as many as nine people. And the reason for that is when you've got only three people, the communication channels are much smaller, so much easier. You can't have sort of side, a lot of side conversations um, or a lot of you know, extra conversations on scope. And overall, the communication is much simpler. When you've got 20 people, for example, you know, many, 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 many different people. You can have conversations, you know, in many different channels and from many different people as well. So between many different people, all of a sudden the communication becomes a lot more complex and there are many different ways that people do communicate, you know, by the water cooler, you know, by SMS, they might pick up the phone and call someone. You might be using Slack or email, and all of a sudden maybe you know some scope starts to creep in because someone's had a side conversation over here, and that communication is much more complex the more people you have involved. So a nice small team with everyone that you need to get the job done in the one place is where the whole team approach comes in. Ideally, the whole team shares the same workplace, so they're co-located. Now, this co-location strongly facilitates that communication and interaction. So, we're interacting, you can sort of look over your shoulder and say, hey, Joey, you know, did you finish that or do you need this from me still? You can really get an answer quickly. You don't have to send an email, wait three days and, you know, and maybe not get the answer that you need. So this interaction and this communication is really enhanced by having everyone in the one place. Teams are often 100% dedicated to the delivery as well. So it's been shown that when you're switching tasks or multitasking, people actually make more mistakes. There have been studies on this and it's been proven that people lose, um, lose productivity of between 20 and 40%. So, you know, you've experienced this yourself. If you're working really hard in, uh, in, in concentrating on something really, really hard, and then, uh, and then, you know, someone comes over and says, hey, you know, do you want a, do you want a coffee? Or, or maybe they ask you another complex question and all of a sudden you have to go and answer this and then you have to go back to the task that you were doing and you have to sort of wind up again. You have to sort of remember where you were up to, get the history again, you know. I mean, I look at Game, Game of Thrones, George R.R. R. Martin famously rereads his entire manuscript before he gets to writing again, just so that he's completely up to speed. Um, so the loss of productivity there is huge and it's the same in non-agile teams. we have in a whole team approach are the, the teams are cross-functional so they're they're people who are generalizing specialists that means they have a broad uh, range of skills a general a lot of general skills but then one deep specialty now in our case it could be for a development team you might have the deep skill of uh, design for example but then you might have the broad skills you might have some development skills in there. You might have some stakeholder skills um, or some product development skills, or you might have some testing skills, for example. All of these things will contribute overall broadly, but your really deep area um, of expertise in this case is design, or it could be any other thing for any other product that you're developing. That's the T-shaped approach or the T-shaped person that we're looking to have within our team. So for the whole team approach itself, for our purposes, uh, for an agile team, we're looking at having the product owner who represents the customer, the team facilitator who will help facilitate daily stand-ups, help remove blockers, and help coach through servant leadership for a team, and then our cross-functional team members who are our T-shaped people, generalizing specialists. 
Now, when you're gathering these people to be in your whole team, it's not always easy. So to overcome organizational silos, because we all know we have them. You've got Jane with a department over here, you've got Kelly with a department over here, Bob and, and Jimmy over here. And you know, they've got all their people. They don't necessarily want to give up these people to go and work on this wonderful project or product that you're creating, even if it is doing the company good. They're looking after their particular silo. So work with those managers and those team members to have them dedicate those necessary individuals to the cross-functional team. It will make your project much easier in the end. It'll create the team synergy that you need and allows the organization to see how leveraging its people into these project teams and building their skills, it'll optimize the product being built in the end. So it'll be much, much easier and much higher likelihood of a successful outcome. Now let's look at the cross-functional team members in our whole team approach. First of all, our cross-functional team member that we were talking about before, the, the T-shaped generalizing specialist. These cross-functional teams consist of team members with all the skills necessary to produce a working product or to complete the product that our project is working on. In software development, these cross-functional teams are comprised of people like designers, developers, testers, and any other required roles that you are needed to get the job done. These teams deliver small releasable products on a regular basis. Now what that is, is the iterative and incremental approach. So we're iterating every two to four weeks and we're releasing something every two to four weeks that the customer can see, feel and touch, which is an increment that they can see, feel and touch. And then they can say, you know, if it's working or not, if the requirements are right or not, um, or if it's what they expected or not. And then by iterating every two to four weeks, we're actually getting that feedback, and we'll go into more, of that, more on that later, but we're getting that feedback so that we can improve and make sure the requirements are right on that regular basis for our customers. Now these people are critical because they can deliver finished work in the shortest possible amount of time with a higher quality and without external dependencies. Next we have the product owner. The product owner represents the customer. And the product owner also generates, maintains and prioritizes the product backlog to ensure the highest business value without creating waste. Now what that means is another part of Agile that you'll become familiar with is the Kanban board. Now it doesn't have to be a Kanban board, um, but it's just the most commonly used way that an Agile team will work. You'll have the, the product backlog over here and you'll have the features, stories or cards um, on, in that product backlog. Now the product owner, it's their job to prioritize that backlog and prioritize what gets done and what gets worked on as it moves across the Kanban board all the way to done, usually per iteration. Now the product owner is not the team lead. They work with the stakeholders and the customers. They represent the customer and they work with the teams to define the product direction. So what will bring the most value? They rank that work based on the business value. Typically product owners will have a business background and bring that deep subject matter expertise to the decisions that they make to give the best outcome for our customers. Next we have the team facilitator. The team facilitator really works with another core Agile principle, and that is servant leadership. So also known as a servant leader, they can also be called a project manager, a scrum master, and I missed the R in there, but a scrum master, a project team lead, a team coach, team facilitator, or many other different names that people might call them, but they are all essentially the same thing, that servant leadership role. The servant leadership role really focuses on things like facilitation. So facilitating the daily stand-up meetings. Those daily stand-up meetings help a team micro commit to each other. And we'll go into more on that later. It's another core agile principle, but that is facilitated usually 15 minutes a day. Everyone stands up and shows what they've done yesterday, what they intend to work on today, if they're blocked, if they need help. Uh, and that 15 minute meeting is facilitated by the servant leader role usually. That team facilitator or servant leader works on facilitation, coaching the team through any, um, any issues that they need and removing blockers. So this might be working with other teams, having the contacts that they need, um, having the other people that they need, making sure that any of those blockers that are raised during a standup are able to be removed, not necessarily during the standup, but definitely as the day goes on. There are many benefits to the whole team approach. And basically we're enhancing communication as we saw. We're enhancing the collaboration because everyone is in that one place, nice and easy. 
We're enabling various skill sets within the team to be leveraged for the benefit of the project. So we saw we've got that T-shaped generalizing specialist and we've also got all the people that we need in that one team, not in their organizational silos. And because we have everyone here, we're making quality everyone's responsibility. So the whole team is responsible for quality on Agile projects. And that is the whole team approach.